make it all these years how did I make it this far through the valleys and over the hills I know it had to be God how did I make it through the storm how did I make it through the rain you want to know just how I got here. It's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. Oh, I made it to far. For how you brought me, how you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me and you never left me. You stood by my side. There were so many times when old man death tried to take me in. So the reason why. I'm here today, it's so easy to explain, it was God grace, God grace, God grace, God grace, God grace. God grace. God grace. God grace. God grace. oh I made it this far. Right. Away. Even on. though I knew the word, still I wouldn't obey. Hallelujah. And it brought me, brought me all the way. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. His holy grace. His saving grace. Some people said, they said I would make it. Some people said, they said I wouldn't be here today. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. His holy grace. God's grace. God's grace. Some people said they said I wouldn't make it. Some people said I wouldn't be here today. But God grace, God grace, I made 
today hallelujah I thank God for my life portion my help and my strength hallelujah I was rejoicing with the brothers and sisters they made another year oh I just thank God that he allowed all of us to then come through this year and we done made another year oh it's the grace of God and I just praise him and I glorify his holy name praise God Brothers and sisters, there's so many things that is happening in this world. We should be rejoicing. We should be clapping our hands and giving God some praise. God is so worthy. He is so worthy of being praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He bless us from last Sunday to this Sunday. Hallelujah. He took care of us all this week. He blessed our families and he gave us shelter over our head and he gave us food to eat and he, he just took care of us. Some of us might have had headaches and whatever, but God has got us here in the house of worship today. Ain't you glad about it? him today church because he's so worthy to be praised he's so worthy to be honored praise God hallelujah you don't just only praise God and honor him when you're in the house of worship you praise him and honor him praise God wherever you go praise God give God some praise honor and glory I glorify him today because he is the head of my life. He's the one that's keeping me from moving around and having my being. And, and I'm so thankful that I can raise a voice, praise God, and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to praise God because Paul told Timothy that God didn't give us the spirit of fear but a power, love, and of sound mind. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. We're praising God today, hallelujah. With no fear, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. I used to be afraid, but I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of man, praise God. Man ain't got no heaven and he ain't got no hell to put me in, praise God. So I fear God and I honor God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to ask you now to get your Bibles, and I would like for, the, for you to turn to Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 1st through the 13th verse. Matthew, the 25th chapter, 1 through the 13th verse. Talking about the parable of the ten virgins, praise God. We all probably know that chapter. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil and lamps along with their 
The wise, however, took any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in them. Come on, come on. The bridegroom was a long way, long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may, may, be, may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go, and, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other ones also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Amen. You may be seated. I was subject today, I'm going to ask a question. Are your lamps trimmed and filled with oil? Be prepared. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the scripture tells us that we don't know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. Jesus said himself, he don't know. Only his Father. When the gospel is being preached throughout this world, that's when the Son of Man shall appear. And God knows who that knows who that is. When that, what time that's gonna be? Matthews used the generation in Noah's lifetime as an example of those unprepared for Jesus' return, his second advent. You find that in Matthews twenty four thirty seven through thirty nine. Let us pray. Jesus, Father, in the your holy name, I thank you so much for another day that you have blessed all of us. Not taking it for granted, but I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us throughout each week. And you put us on the prayer line and you, we pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray for our friends. We pray for our families. You pray, we pray for grace and mercy. We just thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. Now, Heavenly Father, this is your word. Your word is what saves us, and your word is what's keeping us, O oh God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your word would just touch each one of us, O oh God. God, there are so many things that is happening. People's killing one another. Praise God, not just at one time, not just one person. They're killing eight and ten people at a time, O oh God. God, have mercy upon us. Help us if we're not ready, Lord. Help us to continue to get ready. Because one day, Lord Jesus, you're coming back for the church. You said you're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I don't want to be unwise like those five foolish versions. I want to be ready. I don't want to be somewhere getting ready, oh God. I don't know. We don't know the day that the Son of Man should appear. But when we know anything, Lord Jesus, you'll be coming, oh God. Help us to be ready and help us to accept what your word is saying to us. Bless us and our families in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Just like the people during Noah's generation went about daily, activities without any spiritual preparation, many living at the time of Christ's return will be spiritually unprepared. I don't want to be spiritually unprepared. Sometime, hallelujah, God give us a, a lot of time, praise God, to get ourselves ready, don't it? He give us a lot of time, praise God. Sometimes we, we know that we're supposed to come to church or we're supposed to listen at Bible study or go to Bible study or whatever our job's supposed to be. Praise God, sometimes we said, oh, I'm just too comfortable. I don't want to get out of here. We even now, the brothers of God done put it on their heart to get us Zoom. Praise God. If you can look at Zoom or whatever you want to look at, praise God. Because the word of God is being taught, oh God. 
Be ready when Jesus comes. Matthew 25, 1 through 13 presents the challenge to contest readiness for Christ's return. It also teaches that after the return of Christ, symbolized in the parable by coming of the church, the bridegroom. We know that the bridegroom is the church. Jesus is coming back for her church, his church, praise God. And we know that the bridegroom, praise God, we are the church, praise God. We are the believers in Christ. He's coming back, praise God. No time will be left to prepare. You ain't got time, praise God, to go get ready. You can't say, where's my shoes? Where's my, where's my, oh, what, what, where's my thing? I need to get ready. Where's my purse? I, I, I mean, we be looking for stuff. But I'm going to tell you, according to what the word is saying, you ain't got time to go get nothing. That bridegroom is coming. And he's coming for a church. Praise God. You might be sitting up in the bar drink. Oh, I have a little beer today. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, you know what? I'm going to go out of town because none of my church people ain't going to see me. But you know what? Go in a juke and have yourself some fun. That might be when Jesus comes. Jesus might come. He said, I see her sitting up there. I see him sitting up there. That's all right. You can't hide from God because he got all seeing eyes. Because the Bible say he neither sleeps nor slumber. Hallelujah. Just like they were when uh, the ark was being built. They were going about marrying and giving in marriage. And true followers of Jesus demonstrate their preparedness for his return by righteous living. Jesus spoke many parables. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Praise God. The parable of the ten virgins emphasized that all believers must constantly look to their own spiritual condition in light of Christ's coming at any unknown and unexpected time. They must persevere in faith so that when the day of an hour arrives, they will arrive by the returning of the Lord. Praise God. You can't say, well, my mama go to that church and my daddy go to that church. Some of my families go to that church. I ain't worried because I got families in church. You better get right yourself. You better get right yourself. It ain't about what your mama got. It ain't about what your daddy got. It ain't about what your husband got. It ain't about what your wife got. You better get ready yourself, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Failure to be in a personal relationship with the Lord at his return means being excluded from his presence and kingdom. Do you want to be excluded from God's presence? What difference is the foolish to recognize that the returning Lord, John 14 and 3 says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take, take you to be with me that you also may be where I am going. I will come in an unexpected time. Jesus is coming back. And we don't know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man going to appear. Christ indicates here and also in Luke 18 and 8, he said, I tell you, he see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Would Jesus find faith on the earth? I mean, there's so many things that's going on. And we saying, Lord, that's a shame. People just seem like it's taking guns and just killing people out of this world. Just killing. If the virus ain't killing them, people, you're letting guns kill them. Praise God. Proceeding Christ's return at the end of the tribulation. Or Jesus, in a series of illustrations, chapter 25 stresses, the requirement of faithfulness and watchfulness until he returns. The parable of the ten virgins stresses the urgent necessity of perseverance. You got to keep perseverance. You got to just keep moving. You can't just go for a while and then you stop. You say, oh, no, I'm tired. I get tired, too. But I'm going to tell you, this is a tedious journey, brothers and sisters. One day you might feel good and the next day you might not. It's all right sometimes to slow down, but you got to keep pressing. You got to have perseverance. You got to keep going, praise God. When you got a headache sometimes, you, sometimes you have to keep going. Hallelujah. You got a back 
day, sometimes you have to keep going, praise God. I love Jesus today. Don't you love Jesus today? I love and praise God. Hallelujah. In faith because of the danger of Christ coming at a unforeseeable time. The, the all in the parable represent true faith, righteous, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Five other parables teach, praise God, hallelujah, that a large portion of the church will be unprepared at the time of his return. Thus Christ makes it clear he will not wait until all churches are prepared for his coming. Jesus, praise God, from what I can study, he's been gone pretty near 2,000 years, praise God. If we ain't had enough time then, brothers and sisters, we won't have enough time, praise God. God is for real. He ain't nobody to play with. He loved us. He doesn't give his life. Do you know Jesus went through so much, praise God, before he hung on that cross? Hallelujah. Praise God. I love him today. He went through so much pain and suffering before he died on that cross. They treated him so bad. They slapped him around. They mocked him. They beat him. Hallelujah. They scorned him. They put thorns on his head. Hallelujah. Can you imagine what he done been through for you and I? The Bible says, praise God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only only, only begotten son. Would you give your son up for somebody? I mean, he give it up for the world. I love Jesus today. Hallelujah. It should not be noticed that all the virtues, virgins, both faithful and unfaithful, were taken by surprise at the bridegroom's coming. This suggests that the parable of the ten virgins applied to believers living before the tribulation who will have adequate signs. The lesson of a perseverance of the soul, the good man, the steward, the tower builder, and the savorless salt. Hallelujah. These are the some of the, tower, the, the parables that is in this chapter here. While the virgins were waiting for the bridegroom, who is Christ, the king, he didn't delay his, his coming. It's the, it symbolized the period between the two advents. Advent is the two comings of Christ. We know that Jesus Christ came as a baby, and we know that he lived and he, he died, and he was ascended back to his father. But this next time when he come, he said he's coming back for a church. Are he coming back for a church? Brothers and sisters without spot or wrinkle. Like I said, you can play around and mess around all you want to. You can sit up and go to sleep, praise God. You can sit up and play with your phone, praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus might be on that phone. And what you going to do? You going to drop that phone? <laughs> Hallelujah. What you going to do? Drop that phone and say, that's Jesus coming. He's coming. Praise God. A lot of time when you ask to sing, you might not want to sing. Oh, I don't feel like singing today. Hallelujah. But you better sing. You better do what you have to do. Hallelujah. At midnight, the announcement rang out that the bridegroom was coming. The virgins arose, hallelujah, and trimmed their lamps. All wanted to appear ready. The foolish ones, like in awe, asked the others for some. But were they, they were sent to buy some for their own self. We can't share with nobody. We can't share our religion with nobody. That's why I say well, if our mama, daddy, sister, brother, whoever they belong to, or uh, whatever they're doing, they can't share with you with no, no religion. They can't share their salvation. One's refuse seems selfish. But in spiritual realm, no one can dispense the spirit to another. Of course, the Holy Spirit cannot be purchased. The Bible does not use the figure of buying salvation without money and without price. Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 8, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. While the wise was gone, the body or the, the bridegroom came. The Lord Jesus would return for the wedding with his bride, the church. 1 Thessalonians 3.13 says, the wedding takes place in heaven. Ephesians 5.27 after the rapture, praise God, the rapture, praise God. God coming for the rapture. In verse 13, the lesson Jesus said was to watch because the day nor the hour of his coming are unknown. Believers should live as if the Lord might come at any moment. Uh, our lamps trim 
and filled with oil. Jesus is coming back, church, without a spot or wrinkle. Jesus Christ is coming back. Nobody shouldn't have to keep telling us that. Some of us been in church 40 and 50 years ago, praise God. And we need to be ready and prepare ourselves when Jesus Christ is coming. Like I said, Jesus done suffered a great deal. And we need to be able to go back with him when he comes. One day, I praise God, I want to see Jesus as my smiling Savior, not as my frowning judge. Praise God, when I stand before him, I said, Lord, did I do? He said, you know, he's telling some, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I don't know you. Your work was the work of iniquity. I don't want my work to be in vain, praise God. I want to, hallelujah, be ready when Jesus comes. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back for a church, a church without spot or record. We're going to leave all this stuff here behind. I don't care if we got a glamour, what we got. If we got a glamorous house, car, hallelujah, whatever we got. We got money, money, money in the bank. We're going to leave all that stuff here because Jesus Christ is coming. And none of this stuff ain't going to be worthy, praise God, to take back with Jesus. I used to hear El Lorraine say, he never seen a trailer behind a U-Haul. Praise God. We can't take this stuff to the grave with us. Hallelujah. We just thank God for it. And then when we leave this earth, somebody else is going to enjoy it. So let us be on one accord. And let us all go back with Jesus when he comes. Praise God. Hallelujah. As the brother was teaching in Bible study the other night, there was 5,000 men that got saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. When the brother was telling them to stop teaching in that name, Jesus. But you know what? There was women and children also. But the Bible don't give the count of those. So we got to be ready, brother. Let us be ready, sisters. Let us be ready when Jesus comes. You might be in the grocery store, praise God, checking out prices and saying, oh, this stuff is too high. I'm going to have to go to another store. But you know, on your way to another store, praise God, that might be when Jesus break that sky. I said, okay, well, ain't it's time for you to go. Hallelujah. I have to drop everything I got. I don't mind dropping it, because, praise God, because I'm going to heaven where Jesus is. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And I believe he said he's coming back without a spot of wrinkle. With well, the church ain't got it. The church, gonna, the, the hallelujah, we're going to be judged, praise God. St judgment's going to start in the house of faith. Household of faith, that's where judgment's going to start. Be ready, praise God. You can sit up and laugh and snigger at people. Talk about them if you want to. But that's all right, God, taking down everything that you said and do, praise God. Let us have praise God to do what the Bible said do. Jesus done went through a lot of suffering and pain for us, praise God. And when he was praying, praise God, the Bible said drops of blood, drops of sweat was falling on the ground, just like they were drops of blood. Can you imagine him being so in so much anxiety that he was sweating? Praise God till the blood, the, the sweat seemed like drops of blood. Hallelujah. He went on to that cross, hallelujah. He said, ask his father, why have you forsaken me? But the father knew why he had sent his son. His son had come to redeem. Oh, somebody like me, praise God. When that curtain in the temple, praise God, split half in two, we was re reconciled back to our father. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. We're ready, oh God. Help us to be ready when Jesus come. Don't be like them five foolish virgins. Praise God. And all these other virgins, praise God, that is talking. Praise God and saying, a lot of people saying, Jesus ain't coming. Just keep on getting up every morning. Keep on getting up every morning. One day, praise God. Hallelujah. You're going to be missing from this earth. Praise God. Because Jesus, the be uncoming, got gotcha. you. Say, it's time, oh God for you to pay your dues now. I'm taking you in now, sister. I'm taking you in now, my brother. Hey, hallelujah. We didn't come to this world to live always in this world, but we're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. And one day, praise God, when he come back for his people, he said he's coming, oh God. Hallelujah. And on the cloud, and every eye shall see him. Hallelujah. Every eye. Hallelujah. 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 I can't hallelujah. I can't say, well, you know what? I was married to my husband 50-some years, and praise God, and he can't give an account of what I do wrong. He, hallelujah, he got to try to do, give an account of what he done did wrong. So praise God, we all for ourselves. Brothers and sisters, if you got, hallelujah, or anything against somebody, 
I encourage you today, go to them and tell them you're sorry. Beg them, partner, praise God. Don't hold nothing against you because you might be, hallelujah, on your way home. You don't know what's going to happen. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back. And I believe they said he, the Bible said he's coming back. I believe the Bible. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I love you today, and may God bless all of you. Keep, keep God in your heart. Keep repentance in your heart. If you're so mad with somebody and you just feel like going up and slapping them, don't do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go up and slap nobody. Praise God. Go up and talk to them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we get up so upset with people, we do feel like slapping them. I remember one time my husband, he was laid off from work. And praise God, he went every time he was trying to get some food stamp. And the lady, he used to get the same lady every time. And this lady told him, said, Mr. Whitney, your, your wife make just about too much, and plus you're going to draw unemployment. And Henry said, I looked at that woman and said, I just felt like slapping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he, he didn't slap her, thank God. because he, he did not slap her. Hallelujah. So don't get so mad and slap people, please. Because you, you got to pay for that through jail. And if you don't repent, you got to go to jail. Plus, praise God, if you don't repent to God, you got to pay through it through God too. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us be nice to one another. Let us just love one another. I know sometimes that's hard because when people stand up and just call you all kind of names and you do feel like doing something to them. But that's okay. You keep on going because one day this is going to be over with and we're going to stand before God. Hallelujah. And he's going to say, well done. That good and faithful servant. You've been faithful for a few things. I'll make you rule over many. Now enter into the joys of the Lord. See, all this stuff is going to be done away with. Y'all pray for my strength in the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may stand now. The doors of the church is open 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the doors of the church was open. When they was in that upper room, praise God, waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church was open. The Bible said, praise God, when Peter done that message, praise God, hallelujah, there was 3,000 souls that joined to the body of Christ. So you know, way back then, the church was open. So if you don't know Jesus for the pardon of your sin, this is time now to come. Hallelujah. He's waiting on you. Don't be like the five foolish virgins. Don't think about you ain't got enough oil to last. Praise God. Take some extra oil with you. Hallelujah. Go to Bible study. Praise God. Go to these different meetings that you know that God is going to bless you in. Hallelujah. And if you outside of this building, we on Facebook. If you don't know Christ, come to Jesus just as you are. Repent of your sins because through grace, we are saved through by faith. Come on to Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, Master. Lord, we need you. My heart. Oh, 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 oh,
Praise God. Savior, do not pass me by. We come to the central part of our worship. A time of remembrance. The sacrifice that Jesus made for us. A sinless person. Because he was fully man. Died for a sinful being like us. This is a time that we can look in ourselves. And ask God to make us worthy to partake of his body and to drink of his blood. I heard said in time past that I'm not going to take communion because I'm not worthy. Uh, I agree with you. You're not worthy. But God is the one that make us worthy. We have time that we can whisper a prayer to Jesus because we serve an instantaneous God. He can move on a moment's notice. And when you can go to him and say, Lord, uh, I, I did dust, and so, Lord, will you forgive me? Will you clean, make this slate clean? And he will tell you he had already done. Partake of my body and drink of my blood. At this time, we have the prayers of the loaf and the cup. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this day, this hour, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for just our being here, oh God, the presence of the church one more time. Lord, you said as often as we do this, say do it in remembrance of you, oh God. And Lord, we know that they, you said as you, you, this is your broken body that was pulled out for us. Say do it in remembrance of you. And we remember, oh God, that day and the hour that you hung blood and died on for the remission of our sin. And Father, we are so grateful and so glorified for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we stand here for no other reason but to say thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your grace because that we know we're not worthy of this task. We thank you for your mercy because that we know that if it weren't for you, we would be able to partake in this memorial service. Yes, We're grateful for your son, Jesus, because he came some 42 generations so we can have the way back to thee. We're grateful, O oh God, because you allowed us to partake of this broken bread and your spilt blood. We're grateful because you said that often as we do this, we do this in your remembrance. And oh, how we remember how you hung, bled, and died for all mankind. We thank you, O oh Father God, for carrying the cross to Calvary. We thank you for the early morning arrival and the late last night laying down. And as we partake of your broken body and spilled blood, we ask you, O oh Father God, to search our heart and our mind. Anything, O oh Father God, you found unpleasing, O oh Father God, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Father God, because we know not what we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians, you can continue to play, 11, 26 to 29, Paul said, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord death until he come. So then, whosoever eat the bread or drink the cup, of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves 
before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. We thank God for those words. That we, we understand that we have to look within ourselves and ask God for forgiveness for the sins that we may have committed. And I know the God that I've served is just and able to forgive us. Hallelujah. Jesus was up in the upper room with his disciples. He was eating the Passover meal. They was remembering the exodus from Egypt. They were remembering when he had, God had told him to put the blood over the doorpost and the death angel will pass over. And he instituted this Passover meal from that time forward. But after they had finished that meal, God, institu Jesus instituted a new covenant. He, what he did as he had finished, he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in the remembrance of me. And they all ate together. Likewise, they took the cup. He blessed it. And he told them that this is the new covenant in my blood. And often after you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And they all drank together. As a supper. They sung hymns and went out uh, to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to. But we go to our homes and destination. When you leave this place, make sure that the Lord is with you. That the Lord is continued to bless and strengthen you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your people today, and we thank you for how you just blessed us with your word. Help us, oh God, to be ready. When you come, Lord Jesus, we won't have to try to do like those foolish uh, <laughs> virgins trying to go buy some oil for their lamp. Oh God, we'll be already ready, and when you come, you'll just take us up in midair and take us on to heaven to be with you and during that rapture. Father, we pray that you will bless and keep us throughout 
I was going home and praise God, bless our family. Oh God, help us to have peace and love and joy within our life. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now with his people. Let us all sing. God bless all of you. Have a safe trip home. Amen.